It's Python on Hardware time. Yay. What's going on in the world of Python? Dude, every on day hardware? we are getting emails. It, yeah. We are getting news. There's we are a getting lot. updates. We are getting stuff. So, um, big news the top programming languages of 2019 from IEEE Spectrum is out. And I got to say, this is not Python Magazine. This is not the Python Weekly World News. This is IEEE, the Electrical yeah. Engineering Magazine. Yeah. And they're saying for embedded microcontrollers, you little chip logo, well, well, here's the, saying yeah. this is becoming popular. Yeah, so this was interesting because they did two things. One, they had the kind of normal, like, here's the most popular programming languages. But they also mentioned by name Circuit Python, And they said one of the reasons Python is popular is because of things like Circuit Python, MicroPython, Python on hardware, um, things like data sciences, yeah. things like TensorFlow, um, things like Jupyter Notebooks. So that's a big deal. So uh, we see this taught in schools. It's a national programming language of many countries. Um, it'd be really neat to see a uh, programming language requirement in the US. There's foreign language requirements in a lot of schools. Yeah. But it'd be nice to see a programming um, language requirement. And something like Python is a really good way to get started. So depending on, you know, if you're a beginner or an expert, there's a, there's a lot. It's the batteries included language, and I think that's one of the things you'll see. If you want to get started with electronics, something like CircuitPython will help you, especially if you've learned a little bit of Python. And it's like a human readable language. I mean, that's one of the cool things about it. You can see what's going on with it. And it's not compiled. You can just do things like REPL. You can run it real time. Yeah. And that makes it extremely powerful. Also. For microcontrollers, chips are getting so powerful, you would probably only want to run a scripting language on it anyways, because what's the difference? Why not? Yeah, yeah why you not? have the cycles to spare. OK. We have a new version of CircuitPython. CircuitPython 5.0 Alpha 2 is released. And in addition to just, it's we've just fixed a couple little bugs and more boards are released, we're also now generating our um, binaries through the new uh, GitHub uh, continuous integration service so we're able to generate more binaries um, even on pull requests and we'll be doing more releases where we can generate them really fast it's going to be very easy for us to do more and more releases without dealing with uh, Travis CI yeah okay um, I'm not going to go through all these because we're adding all what the team's up to but um, for the the team members that are on the circuit Python team that put some photos in I uh, wanted to go over some of these things so Brian is working on the TVL 49 3D and that went into the store today. Yep, the Airlift Bitsy add on guides and assembling and testing and getting started on the drivers for the PCT 2075. It's an expensive I squared C temperature sensor, the thermal watchdog. That means, in addition to getting temperature, you can ask it to tell you when a temperature has gone above or below a certain temperature you choose. Dan's working on a bunch of BLE stuff. Uh, Jeff, also known as Jeppler is working a lot of audio on, yeah this stuff. is um, some circuit python core stuff uh, current project is to implement the i2s out for the nrf boards like the circuit playground blue fruit mm -hmm. while the pm audio out implemented over the summer is okay the quality is limited to eight bits so maybe we'll see if we can get to 16 bit quality yes this the trade off the nrf 52840 is such a cool chip but it doesn't have a dac i think that's yeah. the one thing that didn't get included so instead, if you want to do a lot of audio output, I2S is the best choice. All right. Scott made these cool PCBs using the After Dark PCBs from Oshpark. Those are so cool. Check it out on Twitter and more. Um, the folks that are doing the Circuit Python book in Japan with Moo uh -huh. um, posted up this cool video. They're showing all the things that something like Circuit Playground could do running Circuit Python. So here's a little video they made, and they showed that you can play WAV files. Next up, so made with me. These are students who used Circuit Python and Moo to light up these acrylic sculptures that they made and etched. So when they light them up, they can control the color and they use Python. And they were able to take these home. So you can see that it just shows up as a USB drive. They can just change a couple things, what the color is or how quickly it goes. And then they have a beautiful sculpture. So nice. Those are really nice. I love the line effect because yeah. it gives a little bit of a, a texture to it. Next up, Nicholas Toll and Toll 
posted up an amazing video about how you can use Moo to make this hypercard-like thing and use Android. So with Python. Have, with Python. So you have to watch the whole thing. And it's only a five-minute video, but it is really interesting, really cool. Check out the newsletter. Check out our site for that. Um, next up, these cool kids got some circuit playgrounds. And check out what they're doing with them. Next up, I thought this was a cool project. This is a away from keyboard stopper from um, for World of Warcraft. Yeah, so just once in a while, it'll make it'll make the character jump. Just up. jumps up. Yeah, which well, is just kind of cool. There's like this little wizard dude. Yeah, um, you know about this. This is Circuit Python snakes its way to this X in a box. X in a box thing. Yeah. I, I, or Xena box. Yeah. I think it's X in a box. Know, it's a, a Cortex M0. It's a SAMD21 based plug and play board system. And because they're running the SAMD21, which is one of our favorite chips, they're like, hey, you know, we can just load on the CircuitPython binaries that are built for like the Feather uh, M0 and it'll just work. So yeah, they have um, sensors and we have drivers. So you can um, use X in a box with CircuitPython and hopefully they'll add an official build because it's always good to have an official build so all the names and the pin numbers match up. Um, but to start off, you can always, you know, begin with a Feather M0. All right, this is making the rounds. It's super cool. This is the Open Book Project, and it's a uh, Feather-based e-ink reader. Um, we want to not only get one of these, but we want to make one of these ones. These are cool. So you can make your own. I love one. the instructions on the back. Yeah, it's really neat. Uh, this is a Huzzah 32 Matrix Featherwing. Plug the Featherwing into it. Yep, we have a Matrix Featherwing, but it's not for the ESP32. It doesn't have the right pinout, so somebody made one specifically for the ESP32. looks great. Okay. I like this. I thought this was neat. Someone says, you know what? Like me some spark fun, like me some made fruit. I'm going to make an Artemis spark feather. Spark fruit. Yes, yeah, spark fruit, A to fun. A to fun. So um, anyways, I thought this was kind of neat, and uh, we'll see. I think. I actually looks really good. It's I got think the spark module. fun should make an Artemis I feather. I think so, too. Because then I can write the headline, feather takes flight with the Artemis. I, the only That's recommendation I would have is I'm trying to make all my new feather boards with USB-C, so maybe if you can fit a USB-C connector. It does require two more resistors, but I think it would be a worthwhile addition. Okay. You can and squish it in. That is this week's Python hardware. There's a ton more. Those are the highlights. Squish, squish. Okay. Okay, what's next? Time travel.